Hello and welcome to another Sonic Lab special. We're very pleased and honoured to have Chenk from Electron, who you may also know as Dataline. He's the guy who basically makes this fantastic electronic music using pretty much Electron-only equipment, though I think I saw a Base Station 2 in there recently. Yeah, or a Monotribe as well. I mean, yeah. But basically, you, you know, you dig the Electron way so much, you ended up working as a product demo demonstrator and now with Electron yeah. full-time. That, that is right. I mean, these machines give me a lot of inspiration and creativity. What I have in my mind, I can directly put it in there. The interface is very good, I think. So if you remember, um, Cheng and John came to show us the uh, analog A4, mm -hmm. uh, which is the f was the first in the series of kind of new direction, more analog electronics based instruments. Mm -hmm. And this is the analog rhythm, which is an electronic drum machine yes. uh, with analog brains, basically. Yeah, that's right. Yes, it's the, the analog brains with a digital control. So, um, so you have 12 tracks and eight voices, but each of the tracks have got like the analog synthesis engine and also the digital sample play playback machine. And you can layer them together on top of each other and run it through the filter and the overdrive. So when we look at the, each of the analog engines behind the, the eight voices or 12 tracks, shall we say, um, the first four tracks have got a different engine compared to the other ones and they are the most sophisticated ones. Let's take a look at the bass drum then. Let's yeah. start there because yeah. I mean, that's the... the the, the, the place to start. Yes, that's why we're here, I guess. So this is the bass drum, which is the, the hard model. Uh, this is by default. So it's 909-ish, isn't it? Yeah, Straight exactly. away. Yeah. That, that's what we, we aim for, kind of, because it's the classic hard type of stuff. So let's play with the parameters a bit. So you have tuning. Go as high as that and low as that. You have like a um, sweep time. Right, so to make it a bit more tighter, you have the snap amount. So that's like the sort of front end transient, right? Yep, exactly. And it, obviously you have the decay. And maybe we could put the decay at full and... <laughs> Almost becomes like a bass note. Yeah. yeah, exactly. It's like a bass. If I remove the clicks, you know, Okay, so uh, I guess uh, another big part is going to be the snare engine. Now. Yeah, let's hear it. So that this is it by default. So if you actually turn the noise down, this becomes like a really nice bass machine. It's like yeah. almost a fifth in there, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's uh, so the engines are very. In depth, actually. And we're just listening again to the analog mm. component, right? Yes, there is no sample activated. As you can see, the sample is off and the level is down on the sample page. So how do you bring a sample into, you know, how would we bring a sample into underneath that? You know, mm. what, what control do we have of the sample as well? Yeah, let's go back to the kick and uh, this is the kick we have. Maybe we can make it a bit more interesting. So let's go to the sample page and now you have, first of all, I would turn the level up here and on this encoder here, you have the selection of your samples. So let's see, I'll choose this kick dusty, the first one and you can hear it's there. So I'm layering up together. So maybe I can change the tune of this and maybe change the start and end point. make it really short. So you could use the sample as just the transient. Uh, yeah, exactly, right. like, yes, so that is very, it's a very capable way to bring up new drum sounds into your music. It also has a bit reduction, which is, I think it's really nice. <laughs> Ugly. Yeah. And also uh, you can um, loop the sample, like a granular engine type of thing. So if I turn the loop on, it's looping itself. And with the start and end point, I can mess around with it. So you can get some really interesting stuff like this. That's, I think it's really cool. So presumably with the moving the start and the, the, you know, you don't have to put like a little tiny one shot and you could do you know, sample an entire drum machine, for instance, put that in as a, as a sample and then just kind of choose which hit you want. Yeah, of course, because you have the, the start point 
you can choose which section of the long or the short sample, uh, the WAV file that you have loaded in there. Maybe you could record your favorite analog synthesizer for like two, three minutes, put it in there and pick some interesting bits or sample an acoustic drum kit, single, you know, one shots in a one large WAV file, put it in there and select the correct start point for the drum hit that you want. So, and you can, of course, parameter lock that in the sequence. So then you could, all that in real time, that's, yes. that's, to get, yeah, that's the thing, we'll come on to that, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. So in terms of sample memory and um, playback, mm -hmm. you know, what, what are we talking about here? Okay, the, the sample storage is one gigabyte on right. your plus drive. And for each of the projects, you can use up to 64 megabytes of RAM. And each of the projects also gives you 127 slots for your samples. Okay. So 64 megs, I mean, if you take five megs a minute as mono 44 one, what's the sample rate? Does it matter what the sample rate is? Does it have to be um, the, the sample rate is 16 bits right. and 48 kilohertz. Okay, so Though the, the conversion will take place when the sample is being loaded into the machine through USB. Okay. So before it's stored in the machine, it will be um, converted. Right. Yes. So that means you could actually run kind of pretty long samples in there. You know, that's yeah. minutes worth, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, you can, sure. I mean, you, you have a lot of uh, sampling memory for a, a drum machine, especially for an analog drum machine. Yes, it's a very capable. Are you dealing with, uh, is there any waveform display or are you working with just start and end points with that? No, there are no waveform displays. Uh, Octatrack has got that because that is a sampler. But this, this is not actually a sampler. It has the sample sports, as we call it. So you're sporting your analog engines with a sample that you have loaded into your machine. Right, okay. And what, what kind of manipulation, does, does it have its own filter or does both of those voices go into the same filter You know, when uh, we combine them? They both go into the same filter. Okay. And the filter is a multi-mode analog filter. So you have low pass, two types of low pass, one's an easier one, band pass, two types of high pass, uh, and then peak as well. Oh, band reject. Was that band reject? Yes, it was band reject. I skipped. Uh, yes. So that, are those are the same filter types you get in the analog keys, aren't they? Pretty much. Mm, yeah, analog yeah. four, analog keys. It's, it's the it's the same type of filter, but uh, slightly tweaked for for like a, a drum machine should be. Yes. Yeah. And um, if we go on further along into the um, the sound design, you have the amp page obviously with attack and decay and hold but you have an analog overdrive, which is, I think is a very nice touch to the sound. And this is for each of the tracks and the overdrive is before the filter. So this is a really cool way to make your sounds angrier and tame them up with your analog filter. So this is the kick. So maybe we could bring the analog overdrive. And maybe we've tried to use the filter. So you can do all that stuff and this is just scratching the surface, you know, there is a lot of in-depth about this. And when we move next into the uh, sound design, you have the LFO page. So for example, that filter tweak that we were doing was nice. So on the destination section here, which this encoder controls, I can select the filter. And here we are, the filter frequency, accept that. And I raise the depth and... Oh. Yeah. Did you don't? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, um, it's a very, very cool thing. Mm -hmm. Have you had a chance to hear this through like big style system yet? Yes, uh, I did. Uh, I mean, at NAM especially, we got a, uh, an audio warning that our levels were too high. Yes. I mean, I said. I remember we saw a photo. Yeah. Yes, and uh, <laughs> yeah, that photo was quite a success actually. <laughs> but um, I said to the sound guy, "It's not me. It's the machine. It's this. This. This bass is like this. Is what this thing does. I cannot tame it." And he said, "No, you need to turn it down." Well, I did. So we've also got effects, presumably, Bill. Mm -hmm. And is that on uh, per? Is it a send based or is it on, on per track? Or? It's a send based. Well, the reverb and delay are mm -hmm. send based, uh, which they're digital, of course. And uh, maybe we could hear that on the snare track. So, so we could go to the arm page. And then you have delay and reverb sends. Right, and that's the same as the analog keys. Mm -hmm. that's the same yeah. as so if you already know the analog four and analog keys, you already know this machine. So all there is left, there is no learning curve. You just have to enjoy the machine. You know, this is, so that's the reverb. So I could go to the FX here and select reverb, which is the dark and gray selection. And of course the reverb can be freeze as it was on the analog keys and analog four. 
it's the same type of engine. And this is the delay here. We could go back and activate the delay sense. And yeah. And this can be, of course, um, tempo synced. Yep. Yeah, it, well, it's tempo synced. And you can have like stereo, which you should be able to hear now. That's one of your little trademarks there. I've heard that before. <laughs> I'm sure you must have. <laughs> and of course, all these settings that I was playing with can be parameter locked in the sequencer. And that's where the magic is at, I think. So um, before perhaps we listen to some sort of top end stuff, hi hats and yeah. cymbals, let's just quickly go through what the connections are. Okay, mm -hmm. so yeah. uh, what are we talking on the back here? Well, you have the headphones and the main outputs. They are um, the same. So you cannot um, have a different type of headphone okay. output. No, it's the same thing. Uh, you have a stereo input, uh, which only goes through the compressor in the machine. Right. The analog compressor at the end of the signal chain. And then you have four stereo outputs for your uh, track, uh, individual track outputs. Right. Um, people may be thinking, oh, it's only four stereo, which means eight outputs, but you have 12 tracks. Well, you see, the thing is the hi-hats open and the closed hi-hats are sharing the same, same thing. So they, get at the same. they cannot be triggered at the same time. So if you're recording multi-track, you're recording everything separately. Mm. Mm -hmm. And of course, um, with the forthcoming overbridge, there's mm. the, or it might even be out by the time you watch this, the, um, <laughs> you have access to the individual audio streams into your DAW yeah. and in the same way. Yeah, right? that will be, that, that's, our, that, that's the intention of overbridge. With the USB connection you have here, You'll be able to hook it up to your overbridge and the the application, the VSTI or the AU application, will act like an audio interface for it. So you can still use your own sound card, but the VSTI application will connect direct to the machine and that will give you individual outputs. Okay, you well, also have the MIDI uh, in, right. out and through. It's worth mentioning that these send DIN sync 24 and 48. So you can hook up to a TR systems. Yeah, exactly. Just like the analog keys and analog four. Right. Um, obviously, cymbals and hi hats are a really big part of, and mm -hmm. claps as well. I suppose mm -hmm. we should have a listen yeah, to as well. Yeah, let's have a listen. Um, maybe we can just go through those yeah, as well. Yeah, let's go through them. So that's the clap engine here. So it can be more than a clap if you experiment with it. And adding the filters to this, you can get these interesting sounds. But obviously we were trying to audition the clap, so let's not get carried away. <laughs> but that's what this what this machine does. You kind of like, you know, experiment you with the sound. Where you start is not yeah. where you finish. Yeah. yeah. And obviously, um, by, out of the box, the default kit is the traditional sounds that you would expect. And the yeah, cowbell. Stuff. Yeah, that's yeah. very, very, very ASO. Yeah. So if I actually reset the clap by holding synth and clear, it's the, the sound that I would expect from an analog drum machine. But obviously, it has that depthness that will offer you months, even years of adventure exploring this. Okay. So we could have maybe a look at the rim shot quickly. Immediately, we're ending up in completely different territory, aren't we? Yeah, right. exactly. But the original, the, you know, the classic sound that you would expect is here. Uh, also, the Rimshot has another engine, which is called the, the Classic. This was the hard engine. It's the Classic now, which you have the two oscillators on this one. And then you can mix and match. Uh, so it's got more your CR78 type. Uh, exactly, yes. Mini pops kind of world. But again, I can turn this into a weird synth type of thing. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. So let's have a look at the snare quickly. This is the oh, the sense is on, so I'll turn the sand off. So this is the the hard engine. We can have a look at the classic because we heard the hard already. It's a bit more like an 808-ish type of flavor to my ears. It's got a sort of woody quality to it. As yeah, well, woody. It? Yeah. Yeah, and um, as a surprise, uh, we also have the, the FM snare, which wasn't available at Messe or now, but we, we've got it here now. 
Ah, log drums. Yes. Just marimbas. Just what we need, yes. But uh, it doesn't but have yeah, to sound like a, Yeah. Yeah, I imagine when you start filtering that and doing all sorts of this. Exactly, the LFOs and the and even like, okay, you've got a certain sound, you can add a sample into it. And the, the creativity is, um, is quite interesting in this machine, I think. And for a drum machine, it's, it's beyond that. And, you know, maybe I'll add like a little snare to this. And that comes like a, a weird snare now. We'll skip to the bass drum quickly. Oh, what's, what's that? So I could clear the, the tracks, all these pages to default by pressing the button and the clear button here. And so we're neutral. So we could have a look at the classic quickly. Yeah, like a waveform selection. have a transient selection for this engine. We have like many different transients. That's the front end a little. Yeah, yeah. And uh, we should have a quick look at the FM bass drum as well. Very, I mean, we can start normal and very quickly end up, yeah. And, and I'm just editing the, the synth page. I have the analog overdrive, the amp page, the filters, the LFOs. There's a lot of things to, you know, play around and experiment and come up with something interesting that you don't get with other um, other devices. So what about straight hi-hats? Obviously, mm -hmm. everybody's going to want an 808 and a 909 mm -hmm. style mm -hmm. hi-hat. I'm assuming it can do that, okay. And yeah. uh, this is how it sounds, the closed hi-hat by default. Um, and this is the open hi hat. We could have a look at the the symbol, which I think you know lots of people will recognize that sound. And the cowbell. Very authentic. Yeah, it is. But it can go into the weird territory pretty fast, and especially with some little delay and reverb, it's... <laughs> there he yeah. goes. There he goes, what's happened? And now maybe we could look at the chromatic mode, so... Yeah, well that was something that was interesting as well, because presumably now we can play, you can play things over the, yeah. over the range. All right, so the, the, the sound that I have created here, can be played chromatically. Yeah. So, I mean, would it it's possible to access that via a remote MIDI keyboard and play play up and down, you know, the, mm -hmm. the full range as well? Uh, it's only, let's see, um, four octaves, I believe. Okay. Yes. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you can play that. And um, yes, it is four octaves, yes. Right. Let's not forget the bass tom. That's we missed that out. So you have like a snap control to, to the end as the start of the, the sound. And you have like a noise. So it's almost like a, a, a another bass drum, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. If you combine these together, it's uh, quite a good thing. And you can of course lock the um, the tuning of the bass drum on your sequencer on diff, you know each step has got a different tuning so this is and obviously you can play this chromatically as well you know it's um, pretty pretty talented i mean in terms of browsing kits and sounds how is that actually done because we're you know you're just calling up and, and changing everything what happens if you wanted to audition entire sets of sounds and, and, and flip through that way yeah well you can of course uh, go into the sound menu if you press function and uh, the right. red ones get active, so it's sound here. So you have like a sound browser, but I will go to the kick track, and here we are. So, uh, and that's the same. That's the same as the analog keys, isn't it? And the analog four, where you, it's, is it like an edit buffer almost that you audition and then you load it into the mm -hmm. slot? Right? Exactly, that's right. So, um, yeah, th these are the sounds that is saved into the plus drive. I can um, call them up and load it into the tracks. 
uh, yeah, that's possible. So, uh, some, you know, it's a good example to see what. So yeah. these, I mean, uh, we were hearing sounds that didn't sound like kicks being loaded into the kick slot because mm. you can. Because you can load um, snare drum into the bass ah, drum okay. as well. On, because these, on these four tracks. On okay, these four yeah. tracks. But however, if, if I try to preview these sounds on the other tracks, uh, it wouldn't sound, right. it, it wouldn't uh, work basically. So that's, 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 that's just a limitation of the way yeah. that the engine is struck, I see. And there's a lot more features that I can show you. I mean, for example, the sample manipulation is, is really in depth. So I will load this sample <laughs> and then set the loop on, for example. I mean, it becomes this ambient thing that you could make from it. And then add some effects. <laughs> and maybe skip to the LFO and add a bit of um, LFO to the filter. And at the same time, I could change the start and end points of the sample and maybe change the pitch. So it's granular you're getting into there, yeah. Yeah, it is. All from a Smurf laugh. Yes. So apart from these granulized Smurf laughters, I want to show you the scenes feature. So I have this, this uh, pattern that's uh, built up. Damn. But now, Damn. with the scenes feature, here I press and I go into the scenes, each pod can have like a different parameter lock, which it can be played. So when I press a scene, I have different automations for all the tracks. Ah, okay. So in the same way with the sequencer, you can have different ones on each track. Mm -hmm. This just basically is a, a snapshot, effectively. Exactly. Right. It's a different snapshot and you instantly change it. And um, it's a playable parameter lock. We could call it that way. Okay, let's, well, let's, 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 let's hear that. Hear that yeah. So this is the, the neutral that that track is playing. So if I got four of these here, <laughs> yeah. So I know in the uh, analog keys, it's possible to sort of pull things out of different kits and bring them in and different, mm -hmm. do you get that same sort of level of memory um, uh, granularity? Well, yeah, of course you can like, say you have a really nice um, kick drum, you could copy that by pressing synth and copy. And it, it's the same with the scenes, you can copy the scenes in between and paste them over. Right. But there is another thing that I want to show is the performance mode, which, um, which is not being shown properly yet, but when you're using the same pattern, but there's a scene active, so I'll turn that off. So, and then the, the, the performance mode is similar to scene, but I am using the pressure sensitive. As you can see, the color is changing uh, as okay. I press more. And on this mode, I can press multiple ones, which makes it much more interesting. And you have the same limitation of 48 parameters lockable maximum. But they're dynamic. Yeah, there yeah. is dynamic, yeah, of course. So one, pad can have 48 locks from all the tracks or you know you could have a different setup okay I'm just going to affect the bass drum uh, parameters here snare here so it's up to the user how they want to use this feature that we've given to them and uh, this is how it sounds the performance mode so. And of course, I can activate a, a different scene and change that. Go and mix another scene. Yeah, right, right. That's very powerful. Yeah, that sort of makes that. that yeah, is the performance mode because on the other uh, analog stuff, you've also you can assign the the. Uh, the knobs as well, is that all part of the same setup um, with yeah. a performance or is you limited it to the it's, pad? It's a, it's a good point that you point out there. It's the, the performance mode is different to the analog keys and analog four because you don't use the encoders this time. You use the pads right. as like the encoders. And you've got more of them, of course. So yeah. I mean, yeah, you have like 12 instead of eight you would have had. And and we, I think it's a, 
this is a much more interesting way to communicate your patterns because I've got you know multiple fingers to press and uh, and it looks really cool with the pads and um, yeah there's a lot of fun and interesting moments to be had you know you can have a really basic stale old-fashioned 808 909 beat and mess it up with the scene and the performance mode so is there a way to record if you kind of created all this stuff you've got all of this uh scene swapping and parameter uh, and performance morphing what have you mm -hmm. is there a way to globally record that as a as an overall performance or do you have to send that out to some external recorder for that you can record it into an external midi sequencer such as your dw so the scenes and the performance mode do send out MIDI information and then receive it back. Also, the performance mode can be controlled by an external MIDI controller with a box of knobs. So if you really want to prefer to have a knob instead of the push, you can do it that way. You can do it that way. Mm -hmm. All right, excellent. So how much is it available for? Uh, in pounds, it's 12.49. In euros, it's 14.89. So it's still kind of a premium Swedish product, yeah? Yeah, that's right. It's a very Swedish product because this is hand-built in Sweden. And uh, this premium price includes, you know, your, the plus drive that comes with the units. You can store a lot of uh, information in there without having to back up on your computer. Um, there's an extensive quality control that we give to each of the machines before it's sent out to customers and retailers. There's also a three-year warranty that we give as well with the unit. And on top of all this, we give out free OS updates. And as I mentioned in this video, we are planning to launch um, interesting machines to control the analog circuits in this. And finally, we also give Overbridge in about a year's time, which this will be a DAW application, VSTI in AU and AU format, which through USB that you will be able to multi-track the device and amongst many other features that we're uh, working on. And also this uh, overbridge technology will be available for analog keys, analog four, as well as the rhythm. And that gives you audio uh, capability on the USB, which That's you, right, you yes. said wasn't available last time. Yes, nice you know, move. yes we had to say that, unfortunately, <laughs> yes. Yeah. So if you're wondering why uh, we have all of this electron goodness around the place, it's because we're doing another video that may well be out at the time that you watch this, uh, which is a sort of tour through the history and the development of electron instruments. So watch out for that. But in the meantime, I want to say thank you very much to Jane thank for coming in and showing us the, uh, the rhythm, which is a kind of Swedish way of saying rhythm, I think. Yes, I like the to rhythm, think. yes. And of course, um, no demonstration from AKA Dataline would be complete without a kind of jam at the end. So take it away. Thank you very much. Before I do the quick demo now, I want to mention that I'll be using the, the analog master compression and the master distortion.